Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. When it comes to renewable energy, most people think about solar, wind, or maybe even hydroelectric. Thermoelectric power is usually passed over for a number of very good reasons. It's usually bulkier, heavier, and more expensive than the other options, but it does have its place. In today's video, I wanted to explore building a portable thermoelectric generator for use while camping using off-the-shelf parts. And I'll actually leave some links in the description if you're interested in building one yourself. Over the last couple weeks, I've been experimenting with a couple designs to see what works and what doesn't. And I've finally come up with a pair of designs that I'm happy with. So subscribe if you haven't already, and let's take a look at what I got for you. At the heart of any thermoelectric generator are chips like this, sometimes called Teague chips or Peltier modules. They generate electricity when a temperature difference is created between the hot side and the cold side through a method called the Peltier effect. Long story short, the power isn't generated from heat outright, but rather the strongest temperature difference you can get between the top and the bottom. And in my experimentation over the last couple weeks, it's actually a lot harder than it sounds. So why use a thermoelectric generator over any other option? With renewable power generation options out in the woods, you have to rely on something from the environment. With solar, you need the sun, so you can only charge during the day when you've got a clear view of the sky. With hydroelectric, you need fast moving water, and with wind, obviously, well, you need fast moving air. With thermoelectric, you need a source of heat. When you're out camping or overlanding, you generally have some form of a campfire going anyways, and a thermoelectric generator can just make use of the waste heat coming off to charge your electronics, even after the fire has gone out by using the coals. And if you have a smaller unit, you can even actually use a twig stove. In a situation where the other three methods don't make any sense, thermoelectric might be a option. Unfortunately, it's not without its cons. Per power generated, it's much much heavier and bulkier than other options, more expensive, and more fragile. If you let the chips get too hot, the wires can actually melt out of the chips. I had this happen to me a couple times over the last couple weeks. So in order to create that temperature difference needed to generate power, you really need to have an effective method for cooling down the top of the chip as efficiently as you can. From what I've seen, there's effectively two schools of thought when it comes to achieving this, air cooling and water cooling. Water cooling is probably the most effective method and gives you your best power generation, but it comes at a price. While you could design a complex system to automate the water cooling using PC parts, the vastly cheaper and more effective option is to just simply manually cycle out your water every 15 to 20 minutes as it heats up as needed. Air cooling has proven to be less efficient, taking up much more space and weight, but it's completely passive and does not require you to constantly give it attention like the water cooling does. You can leave an air-cooled thermoelectric generator overnight to farm the residual heat from your embers and coals from your campfire or your hot tent stove to charge your electronics. So for my first prototype I built, I went with an air cooling design and I tightly packed four chips together in a two serial, two parallel configuration. And I attempted to wire it through the fan so that it would create a feedback loop with the fan cooling the top heatsink. Unfortunately, the size of the heatsink compared to the four chips was not enough surface area to adequately cool the chips, fan or not. Couldn't generate enough power to get the fan spinning or to even reach the minimum five volt threshold for the buck converter to actually start charging stuff. Once I realized my design flaw, I went back to the drawing board and came up with two new designs, a better air-cooled design and a water-cooled design. The water-cooled design I went with was pretty simple. Mount the hot side of the chips to your heat plate using thermal paste or thermal adhesive, and then mount a bare metal bucket or pan of some kind to the cool side, making sure that it's got a very tight contact on both sides so that heat can pass through. Water in the bucket will quickly and directly cool the top of the chips, while the hot plate underneath keeps the bottom of them nice and toasty. For this build, I went with six chips in serial with a theoretical max output of 28.8 volts at 0.669 milliamps, or about 19.3 watts. In my first stovetop test, I was able to achieve 20 volts right away and maintain it for about 10 minutes charging my phone before I called the test a success. With my new air-cooled design, I cut it down to just two chips wired in serial for a max of 9.6 volts theoretical at 0.669 milliamps or 6.4 watts. I've realized that each chip now needs its own dedicated heatsink tower in order to be passively cooled efficiently, so I have a twin set of fanless heatsinks to cool the chips down. And in my test, I was able to hit the minimum 5 volt threshold needed to start charging successfully. I decided against trying to get the fans to run as they were proving problematic initially, so the design is now completely passively cooled. The air in my kitchen was pretty stationary, but the performance of this design would be a lot better with a breeze or if it was cool out, or better yet both to better cool the heatsinks. 
So I didn't go in depth on how to build a thermoelectric generator. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a how to build video in the future. They are made with off the shelf parts though. So check the affiliate links in the description if you want to try building your own. This wraps up the first of three phases for my thermoelectric generator plans. From here for phase two, I plan to build an 18 chip generator using what I've learned here for charging my electric skateboard and other high voltage electronics. And this will all peak with phase three, which is building a large generator array for charging my Cybertruck out in the wilderness. It's gonna be nuts. If you're new to the channel, I take a look at how fun futuristic technology can intersect with traditional outdoors experiences. Check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next video.